Video games are great. They can transport you to another world where you can do anything. Well, almost anything. But there are some things they should never allow us to do. Whether it's something as potentially traumatic as a cuddly pet who can die, or as cringe-inducing as awkward sex scenes that make us want to bludgeon ourselves to death with a keyboard to make it stop, we mere mortals should not be given limitless power. We want to feel like we have boundless freedom, but at the same time, we just can't be trusted to know what's good for us. So, with that in mind, here are eight things games shouldn't let you do. Playing online shooters can be a stressful affair. Everyone is out for blood and you don't want to be the one to let the side down. But there are worse things than missing out on getting play of the game or sitting at the bottom of a table with a KD ratio of less than one. There is no worse trespass than firing off an entire magazine straight into a teammate's butt in the midst of a frenzied firefight. Watch it! You're not helping anyone. You might as well toss your gun aside, join a zombie horde and chow down on your friends for all the good you're doing. Friendly Fire has created lifelong vendettas that are passed down through generations. If a respawn counts as a generation, heated arguments about who shot whom in the back of a skull can escalate when resources are scarce. Skirmishes can break out when there's not enough med packs to go around, and trigger fingers can get mighty itchy when everyone's got their beady little eye on a shiny new weapon. The point is, we can't be trusted not to accidentally on purpose mow down Janet because she took the last med pack when she knew that my HP was lower than hers. It's too much power for simple creatures that are prone to doing themselves a mischief. If a game has an economic or crafting system in place, you'd better believe we'll be picking up anything that's not rendered to the floor. Whether it's a bread bin, a dog bowl, or a toaster, we just assume that if you can grab it, it must have some use further down the line. We may not be able to fathom how a clipboard is going to help us out right this second, but we'll gladly carry around 20 of them, just in case. Open world games that let you craft weapons and armour, and that are home to vendors who will buy any old tat, have trained us to see value in everything. And while that's an embarrassingly sentimental notion, it's just not true. So shame on you for falling for such guff. If we can't use it, we don't want it in our inventory, and fooling us into thinking we might need it because we can stash it on our character's person is just plain rude. Princess, my goat! She's fled! Escort missions. If those two little words don't make you break out into a sweat, or at least a mild rage, then you obviously haven't had enough experience herding an NPC with the AI of a demented sheep to a destination they profess they want to get to. What's that? You're a stranded researcher who lost his guard detail and is keen to get back to town? No problem. Just follow me. Hey, hey, where do you think you're going? Blindly running into danger is the hallmark of all NPCs in any escort mission ever. At some point, you have to wonder if all game devs have formed some kind of blood pact to vicariously terrorise players through these quests. Perhaps blood sacrifices are an outdated ritual of the past, and digital characters with a sense of self-preservation akin to lemmings in a Disney documentary are now in vogue. Whatever the reason behind it, the torment needs to end. Whatever you might believe about gamer stereotypes, I can assure you, no one was getting their rocks off to Lara Croft's ample bosom back in the day, or Geralt's ripped abs. Yes, these things might be aesthetically pleasing to look at, but we're not that desperate. So it follows that we don't need to see those characters stumbling awkwardly through cringy dialogue that is trying its best to showcase a nuance of adult relationships, but instead handles it with all the subtlety and finesse of a Reinhardt at full tilt. And if we successfully navigate these stiff pockets of character development, we get to watch the nightmare unfold as our character starts bumping crotches with the object of their affection. I appreciate the paradoxical allure of romance options in a game as much as the next guy, but watching Geralt recycle the same old moves on a half-naked wench of the week, or Commander Shepard getting busy with a crewmate in a stilted sex scene, is just… no. 
Nope, nope. Shut it down. Morality in games can be something you choose to create if there's no existing karma system, or it can be a mechanic that affects how your story will unfold. Either way, we all have our standards when it comes to just how corrupt we're willing to be, and where we draw the line. I, for example, espouse the virtues of a Paragon playthrough, but as soon as an NPC's back is turned, I'll grab everything I can carry to sell on the black market. But games like Fable, that implement a morality meter that will penalise me even if no one is around to spot me nonchalantly slipping the entire contents of their house into my satchel, have a better chance of making me rethink my actions. Why? Because I always play the good guy. Or my warped version of a good guy, at least. If there's a reward for an action, we'll be more incentivized to do it compared to if there was no reward or a penalty. So games where we're awarded XP for killing innocent NPCs feed the more psychotic tendencies of those amongst us who love a bit of murder. Another innocent has fallen. Innocent? Huh. Consider it target practice. For there isn't a true innocent in all of Rivalon. Let's do away with XP for picking off easy targets and make people work for their progress. That way, senseless killing can exist for the sheer, unadulterated joy of it. We may think we want the freedom to find a wife or husband and get married, but when you're out of pocket because your in-game spouse is incapable of getting a job and you need to keep them in the lifestyle to which they've become accustomed, things can hurtle downhill pretty quickly. Suddenly, you have to check in to keep them happy. A relaxing trip to the home you toiled so long to buy and furnish is forever hijacked by attending to your significant other's needs. It's not so bad if they're paying you for the privilege of having a roof over their head, but most marriage mechanics will have you scurrying around to please your chosen NPC. And married life is not easy. What's that? You naively thought that giving your true love a gift would be a nice idea? You silly goose. Don't you know that just makes them suspicious? It's a lose-lose situation, and not unlike real life, a hell of a lot more trouble than you bargained for. And who wants to deal with that during their gaming downtime? We'll be forever alone instead, please. Much like marriage, at first glance, having an in-game pet seems like a fabulous idea. They won't annoy you with the incessant nattering that comes along with an NPC companion. Some of them will pitch in by letting you access their inventory and store your stuff in there. And if not, having a majestic beast by your side is enough of a reason to drag one along with you. They don't even need you to lavish them with attention. Like their real-life counterparts, they'll love you unconditionally. And that's exactly the problem. They'll loyally follow you, unflinching, into the jaws of death. Where they can die. Unless they're immortal, we're not interested. Killing and maiming people is part of the job, but we didn't sign up to watch cute furry animals die. The fear of the consequences of your actions is something that exists in most games to some degree. Whether it's stirring up trouble in town, killing a shopkeeper you have no long-term plans to use to pillage their inventory, or causing a ruckus and dealing with the popos. There are games that make you pay a bounty or go to jail to make amends, but for a lot of titles, all you have to do is pop out of sight for a few minutes and all is forgotten. You may have slaughtered dozens of civilians en masse, but slip down an alley and the police give up their search and get back down to the important business of eating donuts, presumably. They won't bother you again until your next mass murder, when they'll half-heartedly give chase and you shake them once more by deftly slipping down a side street. Of course, we don't want to constantly be having to run away from the fuzz, but games like Assassin's Creed have found a middle ground with Templar awareness. When we cause mischief, we want to know that the world has been affected. Otherwise, where's the fun? All game mechanics have their pros and cons when it comes to how useful they are when implemented and how much they annoy us on a deeply personal level. Romancing aliens is great, but watching two characters judder and jerk their way through a night of passion is too much cringe for any one person to handle. 
and don't get me started on the trauma of losing a beloved in-game pet. Let us know if there are any decisions games let you make that you think we'd be better off without. Like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to Logitech G for more weekly content. Thanks for watching.